Hi, my name is Marin, and today FM rocks in Lambasa. Mula, my name is Mark. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks in Makassi. Hey, Bula from Rocky Rocky. I'm Mentor. I love listening to Today FM because they're playing my hits. Today FM rocks. My name is Enrico. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks in Suba. Hi, I'm Asunika and I'm from Lotoka and I love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Siva. I'm from Bat. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In this bulletin, defense to file no case to answer. FRA contractors reminded to make payments on time. And Carver dealers welcome Australian relaxation. From the studios of FBC Suva, Deva Nendua. The defense will file a no case to answer submission in relation to Bobby Maharaj, the former chief executive of the then Fiji Commerce Commission. Maharaj is charged with one count of abuse of office. It is alleged that between March and December 2012, he directed an employee to fill in false information without inspecting Raja's food court and bakery in Korvotai Lebu and that a verbal warning was issued against the trader. After FICAC finished its case yesterday afternoon, the defense lawyer informed the court that he will file the no case to answer submission. Defense has been given until January 17th to file their submission and FICAC is to respond by January 31st. Minister for Economy Aya Said Kayum has urged Fiji Roads Authority contractors to be consistent with their payments to subcontractors and other others working for them. Said Kayum highlighted this while meeting with FRA contractors at a briefing yesterday. He says government generally gets complaints from subcontractors who do not get paid on time by major contractors. Said Kayum also reminded the contractors that these inconsistencies bring about reputable risks not just to the main contractor but also to the government. Um, some instances we find that uh, we've given phone calls to the contractors and they <coughs> sort of actually cough up the money. Uh, some people are using their own cash flow issues to not pay or pay the subcontractors. Uh, we are very mindful of that because as you know a lot of the subbies, some of the smaller ones, they're obviously subcontractors to subcontractors also. Uh, you know, these, some of them are small businesses. Uh, we don't want them to suffer. The recent announcement that Fijians traveling to Australia can now carry 4kg kava has been welcomed by many dealers. Andi Tonga Tambaiwalu, who has been selling kava for the past five years at the Suva market, claims business has been slow in the recent months. Tambaiwalu says with this announcement, they are hopeful business will pick up in the coming weeks. But now it's a really a, uh, really a uh, good... Uh good impression that the supply, the amount that they have to take is, is uh, increasing. Eh? So now there won't be any complaints by uh, Australian, uh, Australian visitors or Australian tourists to come and take a uh, cab overseas. The, the demand will be high and then we'll stick with the price, but uh, it won't be really lucky if the demand will be high and then we'll have to go with the price high too. Fijians traveling overseas have been urged to show their measles vaccination certificates. Health Minister Dr. Viremi Wangainambete says the, docu the document is physical evidence they have been immunized against the disease. He says certificates can be provided by the health ministry in the form of emails as well. Fijians that are living in the country have asked us for certificate. We give certificate. Certificate can be um, in paper form. Occasionally they ask for an email version for the e version of the certificate. So we give it to them because some of them go to countries where they might be asked to show that they are vaccinated and we would do that. Operating from a garage or porch will be a thing of the past for Viti Spinal Injuries Association of Fiji. President Paul Magoon says the association was formed in 2007 and they, were, they are glad to have a space of their own after 12 years. The new office is situated at the Fiji National Council for Disabled Persons head office in Brown Street, Suva. Magoon says the years of struggle to have a proper place for operation is over. We have gone through uh, a very tough time when I got hurt. So we thought of the families that were suffering like how we were suffering like us. So we had planned to try and help them. 
and make life easy for them and their carers. The Fiji Higher Education Commission will soon be rolling out its graduate outcome survey, the first in the country. Communications officer Epineri Rawailai says this follows the lack of data the FHEC has to make decisions and advise the government accordingly about higher education. Rawalai says the comprehensive exercise will also allow the Commission to measure the effectiveness of government, government initiatives that are used by graduates of tertiary institutions. The survey will be rolled out next month. Other countries, they do it annually, so we are going to start next year, uh, around January, to carry out this uh, graduate outcome survey and um, the research will be able us to uh, for, for policy formation and um, <clears throat> we will also benchmark ourselves to other countries who, who are carrying out uh, graduate outcome surveys. Linking the good work Red Cross has been doing around the world to Fiji is the mission of Danish Red Cross Goodwill Ambassador Thor Pedersen. Pedersen, who came to Fiji last Sunday, says it is the 192nd country he has visited since his journey started in 2013. His one-week visit will enable him to participate in several humanitarian activities here and motivate Fijians to engage in volunteer work with the Red Cross. And what's important to understand is that we are the same. We have the same seven fundamental principles within the Red Cross. So it doesn't matter if it's uh, Solomon Islands or if it's Kiribati or if it's uh, Fiji. We have our humanitarian values. We have the same background. And we work together as a family, as a team. Coming up, fitness is key for Fijiana. And Fiji football yet, volleyball yet to confirm Continental Cup dates. Stay with us. Hoy tabua ang do talitay na na barong ay na bula FM na bandua na sir. Bula alang gonoa iloto ka do talitay ka na bula FM bertini na bandua na sir. Ni bula bina ka nan reking ko sa bula FM nga ay na kasi. Nalang ko sa mundo at siyono na bula FM na bandua na sir nusur. Ni bula bina ka nalang ko Jerry ay ang melampasa ang do barong nga ay na bula FM na bandua. Bula FM na bandua na sir. The Fiji Airways Fijiana 7's team is aware of the tough task ahead. The side arrived home yesterday and after three tournaments is eighth with 20 points on the series standings. Coach Sayasi Puli says despite a huge progress in the team's performance, they will need to tick on a number of areas. Puli states the series will only get tougher. The, the plan that we did after the series last year, that we need to to work hard and and, and uh, uplift uh, everything in terms of uh, um, our conditioning and and, and, and strength uh, development, and also uh, the intensity of training to to match uh, what uh, other international teams are, are doing at the international uh, level. Team Fiji chef de mission Patrick Bauer says sporting federations need long-term plans. He says the sporting bodies need to constantly recognize talents and ensure they have enough resources to enhance the players' abilities. Bauer says there is always ample time before team participates in any game and he believes they should prepare accordingly. This is the long-term planning that we've always tried to encourage the national federations to, to consider. And uh, uh, granted, they have been working uh, in that regard and trying uh, their very best to make sure that they have a long-term planning. And there's a lot of work involved with some of the national federations. The dates for the 2019 Continental Cup are yet to be decided. Fiji Football Federation President Linga Ngukisuba says the delay is due to the current measles outbreak. Ngukisuba says they had plans to move the tournament to another country, but the proposed country is also exposed to measles. Cloudy periods with some showers and possible 
afternoon or evening thunderstorms over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Fine apart from afternoon and evening showers and isolated thunderstorms elsewhere. And that is your FBC News Now. Remember to join us at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Enjoy your lunch and good afternoon. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hama chale nasori se, Mirchi FM bod julum. Hi, I'm Shara Pukash Bhatt Kata. Tava me Mirchi FM subconsen and Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suba. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hi, I'm Shane. I love uh, listening to Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Shavi. We, we love, love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM, it's hot.